roaming around in a forest. A tiger jumped onto them. One of the fellows is very active. Can you hear me? One of the fellows is very active, so he got up to a tree and he climbed the tree. The other fellow didn't know what to do, so he fell on the ground and pretending to sleep. Then the tiger came to him. And then this fellow whispered something to the tiger. And the tiger went away. So the friend came down and asked him, what did you whisper in tiger's ears? He said, can anybody guess what did he tell? Sorry? I'm not able to hear. Uh -huh. So, anyway, what, what he said was that he has to give a speech after lunch. After lunch, he has to give a speech. Then the tiger ran away. Now, do you agree that new technologies are changing our lives? Right? So how do we respond? Any answers? You have a, this one, I'm not able to hear them, so. I'm not able to hear what they are saying. So. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So I think this is like a tiger coming after you, the new technology. So what should you whisper so that the new technology is not going to eat you? Now there are I mean, my lecture is sort of very, very general. It's a managerial kind of lecture. And so I would like to first see how the technologies are affecting not only our lives. I mean, basically, you we used to use uh, desktops, now laptops afterwards. Now your mobile can do anything that you want. People used to write checks and go to the bank. Now Paytm or ATM does everything that you need. Now you used to pay a lot of money for international calls. Now WhatsApp does this. You have Facebook, you can have video calls and all that. I mean, there's a lot of things that are changing. And as a kid, a lot of kids have this problem of gaming. You know, there are a lot of games and uh, you know, the kids don't watch any TV anymore. They basically are to themselves with their cell phone. So most of the parents are afraid to give uh, the, the kids their cell phone because this has become a perpetual problem for parents and grandparents. So my, I'm a grandparent, I have five grandkids and they come to me, uh, grandfather, give me your mobile once I give them and when it comes back to me, it is not what I have given them. It is something which is, which is very different. And they install all kinds of things inside. And I get all kinds of uh, alerts uh, later. And sometimes they ask me for the password for my credit card and, <laughs> and I get alerts as well. So basically things have changed the way, the way people live and so on. So how are we going to address this. Which is the one that changes? Uh, this. Okay, so what, what I'll do is this. 
that uh, what are the new technologies that are disrupting the business? I mean, some of them you have studied in very detail, well, like big data, IoT, and all that. And also, there is the rise of startups. So when I passed my BE, I had offers from BEL, HMT, HL. I don't know whether you've heard of those companies. They are very big companies. And some of my friends joined those companies and they have become directors, CEOs, and all that, and then retired, like me. But afterwards, my students, when they want to finish their degree, MS or MSc or, or PhD, they were offered jobs in DCS, Infosys, Oracle, and other places, and so on. And now, if an ME student goes from here, where does he, where does he join? Amazon, Google, or some startup, and so on. So there is a rise of startups and people's mentality. Any of you would like to join HL now? You don't know what is HL, right? Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. BEL, Bharat Electronics Limited. They are, become, they are not fascinating companies anymore. Political, social, economic change. There are a lot of political, social, economic changes that are happening. And like, for example, after Trump's election, any of you are affected by Trump? You know who is Trump? <laughs> yes. He's, he's canceling all the H-1B visas and all that. He's limiting. He's, canceling. he's doing so many things. So that will disrupt the businesses. And similarly, there is what is called pre-exit. Have you heard of it? Pre-exit. The UK has this, has this one. So you may ask me, why is all this affecting us? We are students. But you are students. You are going to look for jobs tomorrow, right? So if you want to have jobs, where do you have jobs? In businesses. If the businesses collapse, there are no jobs. And this is what happened for IT now. IT used to be 4 million, 5 million people have jobs, and now it has come down. So how do you innovate as kids who are really brilliant and who are young? How do you innovate so that you innovate for India, in India, by Indians? But of course, my suggestion is to be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur doesn't mean you have a startup, but your thinking is entrepreneurial thinking. Wherever, wherever in work, and of course, come close. But what are the new technologies? I don't know how many of you have heard of Industry 4.0. Industry 1.0, where the steam engine and all that is the first industrial revolution. Now, that has created, previously, the, the, all the jobs were in agriculture. And the first industrial revolution has created jobs in in, in Manufacturing. Second industrial revolution in mass production. Have you heard of Henry Ford? Henry Ford has started what is called assembly line. Assembly line is something which makes the production of automatic auto, automotive cars very efficient. And because of that, the car was accessible to all the middle class. So people were able to purchase cars. And once there are cars, then there were highways, roads, malls, and it has created a history. So 1913, 1913 is a big year in the history of the world. That is the automated automation manufacturing has come through that industrial revolution. Then come the third one with IT. It's about 90s. 85, 90s, you have all the ERP, MRP, all these packages that has come in, SAP, Oracle, and all these companies, they have their own packages. And Infosys to TCS to Wipro, and all these companies, they have become big, this one, mediators between the software and the companies. So if you have any companies, then people used to, used to do that. And then came the current, this one, is called IOT or cyber physical systems. In other words, you can put a, a device 
either in a human part or in any or yourself on or anywhere and then you can trace where it is and it can give signals so for example you have a turbine you know what a turbine is the rotating wheels in the rotating wheels the turbine goes through say water power generator it goes through water and then it gets rusted and if you have an aircraft aircraft has a has a aircraft engine right aircraft engine has also some kind of a wheel which which rotates but then if this gets rusted and then if the wheels don't rotate like technical snags and other things happen then uh, then you are in danger so what they do is every three months four months they take away the engine and repair it and so on this is called maintenance you can put devices on the frames of these engines so that it can tell you when it is going to fail if there is any problem with this there is a lot of rust on the on the blade and if it is going to fail it is going to give you a signal and similarly about the heart problems and all that you can give health to this one also that is the industry for and that is what we are in today and most of it what i usually say is the cell phone of today is like the assembly line of or the car of 1930 okay so what are the new technologies i mean you know all this mobile internet i what the cloud big data analytics 3d printing have you heard of it how is it going to change your life if if you if you are having an automobile say of uh, 1990 or year 2020 10 you have to get the spare parts the spare parts are 10 times more expensive than the original parts although they are manufactured at the same time now you can manufacture those things using 3d printing jewelry so many things are happening so it is basically uh, the service industry is getting disrupted have you heard of blockchain yes and bitcoin how many of you have bitcoins wow that's great <laughs> don't yeah, tell yeah, <laughs> anyway blockchain is basically there are several things that are getting disrupted using blockchain can you say what are those things contracts smart contracts and then banks governments i mean you don't require modis and others so you can govern by yourself this is called the but the whole finance all the activities are going to be getting disrupted all the big intermediaries we have like the banks healthcare hospitals all these things soon will be disrupted of course digital wallets and drones they deliver things to your house and so on and driverless cars and trucks so driverless cars is a reality in there are countries where driverless cars are uh, you can drive this one and all that but so it is changing our social environment how is it changing agriculture manufacturing education healthcare entertainment have changed drastically new technologies mobile internet etc are creating new industry at the cost of old businesses what is happening to the old business for example you want to buy a book there is bonds and nobles right bonds and nobles do you go there and buy it you go to amazon or flipkart and buy it right why they will deliver it to you at home and they will give you some discount and all that so what is happening to the world businesses similarly flipkart will deliver groceries to you on this one tomorrow amazon is going to do it what is happening to the all go grocery stores all the all the retailers who will sell groceries at your house they bring them to your house what happens to all of them so those big industries are going to die for example there industries like kodak have you heard of kodak 
Kodak is, has gone bankrupt. And have you heard of Toys R Us? Children like toys, but Toys R Us goes bankrupt. So why is this happening? Can you explain? Why is this happening? And if you are in industry, you are working for an industry, if this happens, then what happens to this one? And there is the jobs are getting lost. Millions of jobs are getting lost and people are taking away. Startups in every area. Now startups used to go, if you want a loan, where do you go? Huh? Where do you go for a loan? Bank, right? You think the startups will go for a loan into the bank? No, there are basically VCs, venture capitalists who will give them loans. But why are venture capitalists giving them loans? They don't know whether these startups will succeed or not. This is called casino finance. It's like playing cards. Out of 10 startups, if one gains, then you make your money. Agriculture is changing the scenario. Algorithmic decision making. Algorithm, what is algorithmic decision making? Uh, there is an algorithm and that makes the decisions. For example, you are on the board of a company. You want to decide to give funds for a particular startup. So you go through all the rigmarole and then finally decide. An algorithm also has a voting right. It has all the information, it will listen, it has videos, audios and all that. It will say, it has also voting right, it will say yes or no. So there are basically algorithmic decision making is this one. WhatsApp and Twitter have replaced the telephone and email, right? And then, you know, you see Trump and Modi, they are giving all these Twitters saying that we don't, and that is considered to be official, this one. If Trump Twitters, then it's supposed to be official. Use of machine learning AI is becoming the norm. Recently, the Niti Aayog has developed uh, some kind of a a report on how to use uh, this. Past 10 years, prices of natural resources have increased. Extraction has become. This is one thing that one has to worry. What are natural resources? Water, right? Power, food. The prices of all these have increased enormously. The extraction of these things, mining, has become very expensive. Last 10 years. Before that, it used to be water is, is plenty, is available. So you just use and waste the water. But now in Bangalore, for example, you don't get, I don't get water for three, three days in a week. So I had to buy from somewhere. So this is one of the things for gangsters to respond because I mean when you when you become another ten years there are going to be a lot of changes that are going to happen. So of course all of us know big data enables uh, uh, this one when I was doing research on manufacturing in the eighties, nineties, I was using numerical data. But now there is the audio, visual, text, and the other, all the data people use, and they make decisions for this. Have you heard of sharing economy? In olden days, people want to own things. You want to own a house, you want to own a car, and your car sits 95% of the time in the garage, right? So, why do you need a car? If you, you need a car, it's because of convenience. It's at home and you can drive whenever you want and so on. Now Uber will come within five minutes, whatever may be the time. So why do you need a car? And parking, 
parking is the biggest problem and then not only in Bangalore, in most places. So that's where the, uh, there is another thing called the Airbnb. Have you heard of Airbnb? Have any of you used Airbnb? If you want to go someplace, say Italy or someplace, the five-star hotels are very expensive. These are guest rooms where people like you and me they have guest rooms in the houses and they rent it out for you. And also they can give you lunch, they can give you breakfast, whatever, at a cost. So you can be a paying guest. And of course, trading is a common thing. I mean, this is called bartering in the olden days, but now it has become a this one. So the social media and mobile technologies have created this, this, this what is called sharing economy. So youngsters, if you are in Bangalore, you are living in Malaysia or something, if you are if you are working for an IT company in Indranagar, it takes two hours to go commute every day. Well, if you want a house, you have to commute. On the other hand, if you don't want a house, you can rent a house wherever you are nearby job and you need a help. So there are conveniences of both. So products such as ocean, well, asset ownership is not important. So what should you own now, not assets? If you are a company, I'll show you for companies as well. If you are a company, for example, you take Maruti, you take uh, any of these big companies, TVS or anything, whatever, they have factories, they have a lot of land, they have machines, they have people, they have R&D centers, they own everything. You take Uber, what does it own? Nothing. Uber has one site which is maintained by somebody else. It's on cloud and cloud is maintained by Equinix or IBM. And it has some hundred people working in and the Bay Area, that's it. So, but I mean, I'm not saying that they don't want any, they don't have any other resources, but the resources are not products and physical resources. <coughs> so, digital chef. Have you heard of digital chef? Supposing there are a group of people coming from all over uh, the world or all over India, and somebody likes uh, uh, rice, somebody, somebody likes uh, the meat, somebody has something, mm -hmm. meat and all that. How do you create a, a menu that is satisfying everybody? And also there is board of, uh, an algorithm is on the board of directors. It's called Deep Knowledge Ventures. GE can predict failure of garden gas turbines. In retail, focus is shifting from sales and marketing to predictive analytics. So if you go and type something as you are this one, they know whether you are going to buy it or not. So, and they are all recommender systems. So mission intelligent is substituting human brain. Now, as a human being, you have legs, hands, eyes, ears, and brain. Now, robots can substitute your legs and hands, and also ears and eyes. And if machine learning and AI substitutes your brain, what is left? Is there anything that you can think of that the humans have? Huh? Genetics? Genetics? Well, that can be imitated. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's changing education. Now we are all in education field. Yeah, it's changing education. What do you think? It's basically, it's an assembly line, a stage on the, I'm on the stage, I'm so, I'm sage on the stage. 
I'm telling you, irrespective of what your background is. So whether it is elephant, yep, or something, it says you climb the tree. So the examinations are like that. And of course, there are a lot of things like MOOCs, sports, and other things coming. Corporate learning is shifting to virtual learning and all that. So, and it is becoming technology intensive. You used to have books, and now the schools supply only either a laptop or an iPad. With all the notes or something, you can give all your email, submit your this one using using that website. So there is this rise of startups. There are a lot of young startups in India. Well, startups are taking away business from large companies. So if you are working for a large company, what do you do? I am raising questions here. Do you have answers? If you don't have answers, then what will you do tomorrow? Which company? So why is a startup making money? And why are big companies not making money? And why are they going disrupted? Yeah. They are focusing on the latest technologies while big companies are doing their products more. That's right. But they are also product intensive. They have a lot of human labors and so on. So that's where what makes them, they have to spend a lot of money on this. But can they leave whatever they are doing and imitate what the startup is doing? Why can't? Why not? That's right. So basically, I have a business. I have the market. So like, uh, you know, Kishore Biani says, oh, the startups, e-commerce won't work and so on and all that. I mean, that is his thinking. But it's not that this one. And similarly, all the universities think, oh, I don't need PowerPoint slides. I can write on the blackboard and so on. And you will see at least most of the places, I mean, I don't advise you to do that, but most of the places, the attendance is less than 50% in the classes. <coughs> if you are in third year, fourth year, fifth year of uh, BE, then the attendance goes down and so on. So why? People are not interested in, in the blackboard. They are interested in the knowledge, all right? They can get the knowledge elsewhere. So car startups have become new corporate R&D. So earlier I used to have an R&D center. Now, instead of that, I will fund a startup and say, look, whatever you get is the, is the one that uh, this one. So I did not have to go and pay for their medical expenses, pay for their travel, this and that, and all that. But I can have and startups collaborate with large companies because they get a lot of data. Now, this is one interesting slide, which is how much time will it take, how many years will it take to get 50 million users, that is 5 crore users. Telephone took 75 years. TV took 13 years, internet 4 years, Facebook 3.5, Angry Birds 35 days. Anybody plays Angry Birds here? <laughs> okay. So, 35 days. So, the time is shrinking. Let's see the next one. How many of you are about 20 here? Below 20. So you subtract your age from 30. Subtract your age from 30. You have so many years to become a billionaire. Why am I saying this? I'm saying the youngest billionaire was 28. You know him, right? It's the Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. He's the one, he was 28. And he married only after becoming a billionaire. 
So if you look at this one, you know how many days it takes to become a billion dollar company. You know, TCS recently advertised it took almost like 50 years, 60 years to, uh, to have 10 billion dollars or 15 billion dollars and something. But Air Watch has 364 and so on. You can have, for example, Instagram, WhatsApp and all this. They became billion dollar companies. So, I mean, the, the point is, if you're a startup, how many companies in India have a billion dollar valuation? Not many. Now, surviving in a world of rapidly changing technologies. You need to run twice as fast, even to remind at the same place. You need hard technical skills. soft skills, <coughs> leadership, motivation, emotional maturity, communication skills, etc., etc. So how many of you do you think have the soft skills? No, you need to have to fail. I am not going to test you. <laughs> you, you think? So here is one. Then. Uh, good. Three. <coughs> what is this half means what? <laughs> <coughs> anyway, I'm, I'm glad you guys are thinking of these soft skills. Now, if you take a human being, how many kinds of... Anyway, we'll come, come to that later. You have... What is this? Of course, uh, she is Lakshmi. She is coming out of Sagar Mathanam. She is coming out of this one. And there is somebody here. There is somebody here. I'm sorry. There is something here, which is Hala Hala. So this is Shiva. This is Shiva who is taking that. So whenever you turn a something, you come in. There is Amrutam as well as Hala Halam that comes in. So we are seeing the, uh, the better side of it. What are the good and bad of this digestion? Hacking, phishing, stealing data, passwords, Blackmail using pictures, cyber crimes. You heard of blackmail? Anybody plays the blackmail game? Anybody plays blackmail game? Teenagers are involved <laughs> on their devices and spend less family time. Social networking with friends and family is diminishing. Is that right? Yes, right? You think you're, you're socializing on social media, not in physical media. Making connections is easier. Life is more isolated. <coughs> Cyber security becomes very important. Because if you use digital... Oh my God. I'm exceeding my time. So cyber security becomes very important. I mean, you must have heard of Facebook, right? Facebook is under fire because of data security and all that and so on. If financial style regulation comes in, in the finance, you have regulations, right? You have to go KYC and all that. If the same kind of regulations comes, if you want to have a Facebook account, what happens to Facebook? All the industry will die. <laughs> okay, so there are a lot of political and other changes that are happening. For example, the technology companies, if you take the seven companies, 
uh, Amazon, Flipkart, and all that, they are highly valued. And Nokia and others, their 90% of their value has come down the last 10 years. In 2000, 52% of the Fortune 500 companies have disappeared. The average of companies is coming down from 61 years in 1958 to 18 in 2011. So, kids, if you want to join a company, you should look at the lifespan, right? Company is not, you cannot join a company and think that you will retire there. <coughs> and it is seven years by 2025. <coughs> so that is the kind of companies are in trouble. So are the jobs. All companies employ more people than startups. You have, uh, for example, this uh, WhatsApp, uh, it was sold for 15 billion to Twitter, right, or something. <clears throat> you, do, can you guess how many employees it has? 50. And recently there was a big news item uh, saying that they have uh, increased the staff. You know by how much? 10. <coughs> so there are political changes that is happening. Globalization is testing this one. And Trump fellow is saying, I don't know this is they are going others. Trump is saying he wants to build walls with Mexico, Canada. He's fighting with Canada. Canada is such a nice country, a nice country. Government has initiatives and so on. So basically political risk in terms of trade, access to talent, regulatory challenges, visas, this is going to affect the business. Uh, this is very, very important thing, societal changes. Wealth concentration has increased. Why, why do you think Trump got elected? It's because he said, look, I'm going to stop immigration. I'm going to raise, uh, you know, make in America and, uh, you know, work in America, being Americans and all that and so on. He made all these promises because he's trying to keep all of them. And basically that is the one that has given him all the votes. So wealth concentrated, one percent of the people have 50 percent of the assets. 70 percent of US workforce has no wealth wage increase in the past four decades. So, I mean, this is, this kind of statistics are horrifying in India. Similar statistics is true in India. We have 800 million people who are seventh grade or less. They live, they live in uh, their villages and they are basically, you call them farmers and all that. Jobs are affected by distribution. So there is an escalating political risk. So all of us as companies we are used to looking at companies as technology oriented. So I know how to do this. I have these APIs. I know how to do the blockchain mining and so on and all that. But that's fine. But you are affected by Trump. You are affected by Modi. You are affected by other things that are happening. So you better be careful. And this is another thing, the natural resources, during the last century, prices of natural resources all fell, last century. The past 10 years, all the chaos were wiped out. You can see that the rupee value is going down against the dollar. That's because the oil price is going up. Today, demand is sorry, no sources, new sources are scarce, extraction is expensive. This is true for water. Shortage of one resource rapidly impacts others. For example, energy intensity of water is rising due to lowering of the groundwater table. The world could be entering into the era of high and volatile resource prices. 
why am I telling all these problems? I'm telling them because you should use your intelligence. You are the young guys. You should use your intelligence to solve some other problems. I'm going to raise some of those issues. So this is where, with all these problems, if you want to solve innovation in India, by India, by Indians, let's look at what are the things that large young population, everybody says, oh, we have below 25 years, so many people and all that. 29 states, 18 languages, need services that improve resource efficiency. Your infrastructure is bad, and most of the population are this one. 25% of the population are poor and malnutrition. You know, one malnutrition means they get into a disease, and that's it. Of course, if you look at the food security index, we are behind Uganda. Human Develop Index, we are 134 out of 187. Malnutrition, 47% of Indian children under 5 are severely malnutrition. And in at least in the statistics I have analyzed in Andhra Pradesh, one out of every thousand children dies before the age of five. But why all this? We have a lot of agriculture. Nature is very nice with us. For example, India has 52% of land is cultivable. 52% of the land is cultivable, whereas global average is 11%. Are we using it? No. Can you tell me in agriculture the most efficient country? You cannot, you cannot guess. It's Egypt. And you know, the US has, US has 10 times our resource efficiency, whereas uh, China has five times. You know. <coughs> has 20 agroclimates, you know, if you look at the statistics, sunshine hours and days, you can, you can produce anything you want. Mega center of biodiversity and all that, livestock sector, India has 16% of cattle, 57% of buffalo, 17% of goat, 5% of sheep population. If you know from Bombay, it has a big port, right? It exports a lot of things from Bombay port. You know the one item that is the maximum that goes from Bombay port? Huh? What? Meat. Buffalo meat. Buffalo meat is the one that goes from there. So what is innovation for India? It means triple A. Affordability, availability, and awareness, food, housing, health care, education, employment. Think new ways of providing these living services using new technologies. Hi, you are, you are worried about my... Uh, am I exceeding my time? Huh? Okay. So what are the issues before us? Scientific research currently is being curious at ATVM. Right? You want to publish a paper, some conference, a journal, and want to get your promotion and all that. It's not motivated to solve the immediate problems of the country. I'm sure you can get a patent if you solve the waste, waste management problem in Bangalore. If you solve the water resource problem in Bangalore. If you have, you can increase the agriculture in, in India by 10 times. But somehow that this doesn't come. And initiatives such as smart cities can be targets for open innovation and so on. How should school, college institutions modernize themselves with the improvement, employability of the people? So the issue is be an entrepreneur. Job seeking, change your mindset. From job seeking to job creation. 
migration to localization. I want to migrate to Bangalore, I want to go to New York and all that too. I want to improve my local, this one. Resource uses to resource creation. I want to use electricity and then this one. So I have, there is solar, this one coming, how do I create solar power? And self-promotion to community welfare. Product ownership to service sharing. For example, you have heard of Satoshi, right? His paper on the web, he never published it, right? How much of, how many companies it has created, how many jobs it has created, how many trillions of dollars people have invested on the Bitcoin. Take that as an example. So, I mean, I'm not saying you need not have to publish or anything, but you do. It's not always the traditional way. When things are changing, you are following non-traditional ways. You should just thinking also should change. Questions, what technology can help jerk creation? Resource minimization while fulfilling the needs. Can it be a research question? Can you get a PhD for this? When you have a startup, the answer is a big yes. What kind of educational training are needed to enable this goal? Can big industries be bifurcated into small scale industries, spread across the country to create jobs and increase the efficiency instead of having steel factory in Jamshedpur or something? Can you have small steel factories all over? You can save on gases and transport. You can also create jobs locally and so on. I mean, I'm giving steel as one of the examples, but anyway, capitalize on natural resources. You have water, land, sunshine, human, and for smart agri construction, land utilization, smart grids, water, power, and so on. I mean, I don't have solutions, but you certainly can give solutions. Develop social capital. We have three kinds of capital. <coughs> can you guess what they are? Of course, money. Human capital, social capital. Of course, I always better connected people enjoy higher returns. You can say, "Oh, he is my classmate. He is basically, uh, you know, butters everybody, and okay, that's why he became a CEO and all that and so on." Right? Well, I did a lot of papers, but I did get it. It is not what you do that counts. It is whom you know that counts. See, your connections are very, very important. This is called partner network. That's important. So try to develop social capital. African power. If you can walk, if you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. So if you are a college president, you can be a party president. If you are a good researcher, you can be a good candidate for a Nobel Prize. Be ambidextrous. What is ambidexterity? Both hands. You know that is called chimera. It has several hands, several this one. So India needs a large number of high quality researchers and graduates with problem solving abilities, communication skills, and industrially technical strengths. This will be severe on the health of the country. So what are the conclusions? Be expert in an area, know your surroundings, gain confidence you are no less than others. That's very important. Have a long term map of your career. Network with leaders and industries. As a student, as an end person, if you want to go and talk to somebody, they will just welcome. Don't feel shy. Be aware of societal and country needs. Good luck. See you as a PM or a Nobel laureate, industrialist, or a reformer. Thank you. <laughs>